Hello and welcome to the AI Settlement Generation Challenge in Minecraft. I'm Christoph Salga and you better get your cake and golden apples ready because this is a 2021 announcement of the winners. So, if you're watching this either at the Foundations of Digital Games conference or on YouTube, you might already know what the challenge is about. You need to build an algorithm that creates an interesting or plausible Minecraft settlement. The two big challenges are to make this fit into an unseen map, so to provide an adaptive approach to procedural content generation, and to also fool a bunch of human judges into believing that this was potentially made by a human, so be at least as good as a human, if not better. And at this stage, I normally show a time-lapse video of um, a bunch of YouTubers building a Minecraft settlement to kind of illustrate the idea of what we're striving for. And I'm very happy that this year, I'm actually showing you um, generated content. This is actually a bunch of AIs building a settlement. And I think we've come a long way. So how does the competition work? Well, basically, it's quite simple. Our participants submit algorithms, and we then, this year, took two unseen competition maps. We applied all the algorithms to these maps, sent them out to our judges, and 17 judges submitted judgment scores this year. Our entries get rated in four categories. Adaptivity, as in how sensibly does the generated settlement react to the map and terrain and uh, environment that it had to deal with. Functionality, as in what kind of affordances does the generated settlement provide both to the player and potential villagers living in that settlement. Also, evocative narrative. How well does the settlement tell a story through environmental storytelling about both the history of the settlement and the people that live there? And finally, aesthetics, which is less about looking good and more about avoiding those kinds of mistakes that are obvious to a human, but not so obvious to an AI. So what is new this year? One great new development is we do have a new client to interact with the world uh, developed by Niels Gorlick, which um, allows real time interaction with a Minecraft world. So you can actually now run these generators or some of them while you yourself are in this world and watch as the generators algorithmically uh, create a settlement, a castle, and even have uh, people run around and simulate them. This additionally offers uh, up a lot of new opportunities as it allows you to interact with a lot more functionality from the Minecraft world. We also had two new challenges in our evaluation this year. One is we added existing structures on the map because our ultimate goal is to move towards co-creativity. So we want the algorithms to continue uh, and build and extend settlements that were made by humans. So to get a bit closer to this goal this year, we added the settlement from last year's winner, which you see on the left here, the walled in city with the uh, sandstone buildings and uh, had one uh, of the maps where the generators were run on, uh, then generate um, their settlements next to it and see how they deal with it. Would they destroy the existing settlement? Would they add to it? Would they interact with it? And this is one of the uh, better solutions. Here you see a second city wall that snuggles up really nicely to the first wall and really fits itself into that niche. Also, we uh, looked at larger area generation. So this year, in all previous years, we already ask our participants to write algorithms that can deal with various sizes. But we deliberately committed to a bigger size this year to also ask people not just to build things on the map, but to possibly also have the generator consider where to build and where not to build. And what did we see this year? So one really great development was many more agent-based models. So we saw a lot of participants have simulations run in the background where settlers run around, collect, re oops, sorry, uh, collect resources, build houses one after one, figure out how to satisfy their need, and also use that immediately to generate a bunch of storylines. We also uh, this year saw 
at least two instances of procedural games generated within these settlements. So we had one entry that uh, very much focused on dungeon generation and then created a handbook. <coughs> both outlining the history of that dungeon, but also giving clues as to various procedurally generated artifacts hidden on the lowest level of that dungeon. Another entry had a built-in murder mystery, where various clues are scattered throughout the village that allow you to identify a murderer living amongst the settlers, and eventually you can uncover its uh, killing basement. We also saw, which is a really great development, a lot more modular buildings. So in previous years, a lot of the entries relied on either templated buildings being put down or buildings with little modifications. This year, several of the participants committed a lot more to the idea of actually procedurally generating a building in place, like the massive dystopian city by Neil Skolik you see in the past, or uh, this uh, castle um, being generated, or even more modern looking uh, modular buildings which are built uh, part by part. We also, which uh, have a really active community, and I will give a lot of information on how to join our Discord um, and check out our wiki, which you probably find either below this video or in the uh, Discord of the conference. But we have a very active community where hundreds of people are discussing what they're building. And this year we saw also a lot more inspiration taking from real life places. One specific example is a discussion we had on Colon Walled City which uh, led to one of our participants try to build like a massively vertical uh, stacked and incredibly dense city. So without further ado, it's time to get to the results. So this is the fourth consecutive year. We had 20 submissions and we had 17 judges evaluate them. And this is the final results. On third place, we do have Niels Golick with the aforementioned entry of his kind of dystopian mega city. It's basically one building um, that is generated modularly in place. It has a lot of functional um, elements within each uh, room, which are also procedurally generated and populated with like beds and all kinds of entries. And another really neat feature is even so, this city has quite a complex architecture. It is fully connected through procedurally generated stairs and walkways. And in second place, we do have ICE. ICE uh, provided an entry that relied heavily on um, multi-agent simulation. It's actually the entry you saw at the very beginning that produces these uh, plausible real-time builds. So you have actual agents run around and put down these settlements and plant and harvest trees to gather resources. The buildings I think here are uh, mostly templated, but you also do have a procedural narrative being specifically generated. So it's a really interesting settlement. It often ends up being on the slightly smaller scale, but does really well with placement. And finally, the winner is the team from Tsukuba University. Congratulations um, to uh, that team from Japan, who submitted this entry, which again relies in part on a multi-agent simulation, but also has an underlying tech tree. So if you actually um, check out the books that are hidden throughout the village, you will see that many of these settlements can only, uh, many of the buildings can only be built once previous like research gathering buildings of lower tea have been built. So there is a whole tech tree that gets unlocked by the villagers. It's also the village that contains the murder mystery and has some really neat features like quarries where the actual mined resources are counted and available in a chest. So you should definitely check that out and um, all of these entries you can actually find on the open Minecraft server we have right now where you can meet and discuss them with other people. More about that later. But once again, congratulations to Tsukuba team for their great entry and um, also a very, very impressive overall score. So this is the results overview. As I said before, we had uh, 20 teams participating this year and all of them uh, brought something interesting and new to the competition. So I definitely encourage you to both check out the maps that they generated or potentially even have a look at this code. 
Overall, we also saw a slight increase in scores compared to last year. And it's always a bit hard to really say what these scores mean. So we do provide our judges with a scoring guide where we say that five is about the score you should give if it's a naive human, if you think a naive human could have built this settlement and you're unsure if, if or not this was built by an AI, well, everything above five should uh, either be like some kind of superhuman performance or a performance by like a trained human, like an architect or a team of humans or a human with a lot of time. So this year, I think we see the first time uh, in our competition where an entry actually breaks through that uh, five point threshold on the final score. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if the scores are further going to rise in the future and uh, what exactly that means. We also have a second generation, uh, a second optional bonus challenge, the Chronicle Challenge, which this year again was won by the World Foundry, but we did have three entries this year. So um, there was actual competition for the Chronicle Challenge where the task is to actually produce a written book that is in some way about the settlement or kind of reflects its history or its people in written text form. And the Chronicle Challenge this year generated this impressive massive uh, dungeon with a backstory about some fallen empire that stored its relics and is dead inside that dungeon and you have to battle your way through to actually find these uh, relics and uh, they did win the chronicle challenge but we did have two other teams who were competing and who also scored uh, quite well in uh, their challenge so this is something also to watch in the future and that's it from us uh, at this point so if you're interested you should check us out on this website you can follow us on twitter and i highly encourage you to join our discord and uh, all of this information, again, you'll find over either on the kind of below uh, or uh, somewhere on the um, appropriate information channel on the conference. But uh, I do want to leave you with one final word. So first of all, thank you again to all of our participants and uh, community members and judges who make this possible. Um, you're a great community and uh, we are very glad to have you. Once again, congratulations to the winning teams. But I want to leave you with these parting words. So unfortunately, it's very, very hard to just, you know, experience this by looking at it. So what we've done is we've actually used all these generators to create a big composite map because you can just run all of them together and you get a beautiful map with a lot of small, interesting, unique settlements dotted around for you to explore. And if you're interested in this, uh, and you have Minecraft, then I do uh, invite you to either, you know, check out our Discord channel on the conference or the Discord channel for our community. And there you find a link to a server where you can actually play these settlements right now and experience them and build in them together with other members of our community. And you might even be able to meet some of the winners. And uh, that's it from me. Once again, thanks all for playing. And I do hope to see you at the um, 2022 AI Settlement Generation Challenge in Minecraft. Thank you very much.